5.26 p.m. Oaklawn, Illinois. Friday, April the 21st, 1967. The fury and destruction of the tornado. Wind speed estimated as high as 500 miles per hour within the turbulence of the tornado. Speed of travel from 5 to 139 miles per hour. Destruction to all in its path, a path of anger. What is it like to be in this path? Take my advice and don't try. Take, take the necessary precautions. Be wise, protect yourself. As you can see from this film, the force and destruction was fantastic. The property loss for Oaklawn has been estimated in excess of 25 millions of dollars and another 25 millions for the adjoining communities of Hometown and Evergreen Park. Aside from the 37 deaths, there were over 500 serious injuries requiring hospital and doctor aid. Over 6,000 automobiles were damaged. Uncountable trees, shrubs, and outbuildings were completely destroyed. And later, 100 piles of debris that once were homes were force burned by the fire departments. What does it feel like to know you have been wiped out? I also went through this agony. Later that evening, I ended my lesson tape with this. There is a terrible aftermath of this in the excitement of taping this. I reversed the tape to re-record to record the additional happenings and it didn't take. I'm now taping this at well, the time is I guess, I guess about 8.30. I sent my janitor over to my house after the excitement of the tornado there because I was concerned with my own particular family. In about 15 minutes, he came back and said he couldn't get near where I live, which is only about six blocks from the theater here. That sort of panicked me, so I decided to go home. It would be easier to drive naturally, to walk naturally. So, excuse me, I started running, and when I got within a couple blocks of my home, I saw the trees down, the high tension wires down, and I was sure that something had happened at my own home. As I approached my home, it was just an absolutely unbelievable sight. Every home in my block is completely demolished, but thank God for one thing, my family was all right. I have six children, and they had heard the announcement of the oncoming possibility of a tornado and they had gone into the basement. I have a tri-level. And they were standing by the garage door when it hit. And through some, well, not through some freak, but through the act of God, it, it took the garage door and, and pushed it down and seemed to form a cover for him. My home and every block in, every home in the block that I live in is completely demolished. There's nothing left except a couple bare walls. I I'm, don't know why I'm even recording this now. I don't know where to go from this point. The Lord protected all that I had, which are my loved ones, and I guess I can be thankful for that. What we'll do for the remaining hours left for the night, I, I don't know. This started off to be just a lesson. Maybe I learned a lesson from it. Maybe I learned that a little bit more faith in God and less acceptance of the fact that it can happen to others instead of happening to you. Because it sure happened to me. I'm completely at this point wiped out. That's all I can say for now. Say a prayer for the many people that have been killed because the latest report was about 40. Thank <laughs> you.
This experience also is one that I would not care to go through again. To cope with the fantastic debris problem, the stricken areas were sealed off in excess, controlled by the civil defense. Volunteers were requested, and they came by the hundreds and hundreds. And what a phenomenal job of cleaning up was done. From all walks of life, dirty, back-breaking work, equipment from all over the country was brought in, and within a short week's time, some semblance to normal came back. Red Cross, Salvation Army, churches, lodges, fraternal organizations, businessmen, Boy Scouts, YMCA groups, women's groups, teen groups, all came to the assistance of the confused victims. Food, clothing, financial aid, lodging, furniture, all were donated. Problems that seemed unsurmountable were gradually being worked out. Repairs were started, salvage, cleanup, and attempt back to normalcy. Private lives were exposed. In the debris, you would find your neighbor's checkbook, a wedding album, discharge papers, love letters, insurance policy, currency, coin collections, books, records. Just visualize all the contents of your home being whirled away and scattered to the four winds. In all this time, the area was filled with the curiosity seekers. Houses completely destroyed and the owners looking dazedly at what had been their home. And then a car would drive by, stop, look and gawk, and then ask, where else did the tornado hit? I believe this was one of the few galling factors that had a tendency to make you wonder about your fellow man. And souvenir hunters and picture takers Fortunately, they did not create a problem, but it was a bitter nuisance. Another group were the insurance adjusters and contractors. Most insurance companies handled the claim losses quickly and fairly, but again, there are those few who must be classified as unscrupulous. But that's a different story. Now, it is one year later. All signs of debris are gone. Most repairs have been made. Most home sites have been rebuilt. Most insurance claims have been settled. Most disrupted lives have readjusted. But the missing ones are not forgotten. Nor is the date. 5.26 p.m. Friday, April the 21st, 1967. Because of the severe warnings announced by radio and TV and the existing weather conditions, most everyone was alerted to the potential danger. The loss of lives was minimized due to this. The Weather Bureau forecasted severe storms and possible tornadoes. An example of these warnings and their seriousness was the weather report of Jim Hill, TV announcer for Channel 5. I also taped his report directly from the television set. just north of Elton and in Barrington. The Barrington report followed the Elton report, and I have uh, just a hunch that it might possibly be the same twister. No reports of any damage there. The one in Elton, about seven miles north of town, was reported moving east of the beam of right toward my house, as a matter of fact. Earlier reports, I gave it a Belvedere uh, touchdown and one in Woodstock. We know that there are injuries in Belvedere and extensive damage, but no uh, word is yet on just uh, the, the full extent of the thing. We'll have that as quickly as possible. Now down southwest of the city and south of the, the metro area, Theotorm, the, the, the tornado of New and also LaSalle. The uh, sad fact is the twisters are just popping up all over the area, so rather than delineate all of the counties that are affected, let's just say that if you're watching this picture, Anywhere in Illinois, if you can receive our picture and you are in Illinois, you are under a tornado watch at this moment. Just a short four minutes later, the tornado struck and a loss of 37 lives was the result. These deaths could possibly have been avoided 
if proper precautions had been taken. Three deaths in a supermarket, one death in a restaurant, three in a tavern, two in a bus terminal garage, and nine deaths in cars. These 18 deaths all occurred within a one square block area in the vicinity of the Southwest Highway and 95th Street. The amazing thing is that there were no residential deaths except for one case of a falling tree striking a garaged car and crushing the occupant of the car. Additional lives were lost though. Two in a trailer park, four deaths in an adjoining roller rink, and 12 more deaths, all car occupants, scattered throughout the path of destruction.